Now we'll see in detail the classification of the roads. You can classify the roads on two different bases. Firstly, the classification based on the significance or importance of the roads. Now in that particular category, we are going to see the following particular subtypes of the roads. The expressways, the national highways, the state highways, the major district roads, the other district roads and the village roads. Now expressways are the high speed roads which are used for uninterrupted traffic. The minimum speed limit on these particular roads is 60 km per hour. Their basic advantages are reduction of the travel time and the fuel consumption. For example, Mumbai Ahmedabad is a expressway. Next category we have is the national highways. Now these are the roads which are connecting the capital of a nation to the capital of a state. For example, Mumbai Bangalore is national highway number 4. The next category we have is state highways. These are the important roads which will connect the capital of one state to the capital of adjacent state. The next category is major district roads. Now these are the important roads you can say which will connect the capital of a state to a district headquarter. Also they may connect the district headquarter to the important marketplaces or the places of production within a state. The next category is other district roads. Now these roads will connect a district place to a taluka headquarter and these roads have somewhat lower specifications as compared to major district roads. And the last category will be the village roads. Now these are usually made up of soil or earth and they will help to take the traffic in the rural areas. Now we will see the classification of roads which is based on the materials of construction. First category we have is earthen roads. Now these roads are usually made up of soil and they are provided only in the villages. The second category we have is water bound macadam roads. Now these roads are constructed by taking the broken pieces of stones of the sizes of 2.5 cm to 7.5 cm. Now the bigger pieces of the stones are laid in the bottom layer and on the top of that particular layer the smaller sizes of the stones are laid uniformly and these particular stone pieces are compacted by using bulldozers etc and the binding agent or the agency who will bind the different sizes of the stones will be the mixture of stone dust and the water or you can say the mixture of the soil and the water. So that particular mixture is laid on the two bottom layers of the broken pieces of the stones and which will be finally again compacted with the help of bulldozers to give you what is called as water bound macadam road. Now the third category we have that is the bituminous roads. These are also called as tar roads. Now their construction is little bit different than the water bound macadam roads. Firstly the water bound macadam road is constructed as I have told you just now and on the top of the water bound macadam road the mixture of small pieces of the stones of the sizes of 16 millimeter to 20 millimeter and the bitumen is laid uniformly. So the mixture of smaller pieces of the stones and the bitumen or tar will give you smooth wearing surface at the top which you observe in case of tar roads. Now the final category we have is concrete roads. Now these roads are somewhat more durable than the 
other categories because cement concrete is used as the topmost layer of that particular road. Now we will study the sub branch fluid mechanics. It is the sub branch of civil engineering which deals with the study of fluids and the fluid flows. Their applications are as follows. The knowledge of this subject helps in the design of the steel gates which are used to control the flow of water over the dams. Now during the rainy season what happens is that the water level in the river starts increasing and once it goes over the top of the dam the flow of water starts overflowing the dam and it is very essential to control the flow of water which is over the dams with the help of the steel gates. So the knowledge of this subject helps to design the steel gates in the sense that the shape of the steel gates and their thickness can be designed by knowing the pressure of the water which starts overflowing the dam. Also the knowledge of this subject helps to design the wall of the dam and the elevated storage reservoirs. By calculating the actual pressure you can design the wall of the dam in the sense that the thickness of the dam wall and the height can be designed. Also the pipelines which are carrying liquid under pressure can be designed by using the knowledge of this subject. Basically you will need to calculate the thickness of that pipe which carries the water under pressure. Similarly the design of the pumps and the turbines can be easily done by using the knowledge of fluid mechanics. You will have to calculate the thickness of the blades of the turbine and you will have to determine the shape of the blade of the turbine by using the knowledge of fluid mechanics. It also helps in the process of dimensional analysis and model studies. This particular slide shows you the photographs of dams and the spillways. The second photograph shows you the spillway which is nothing but the portion of the dam on the downstream side of the river which helps to glide the water smoothly to the other side. It is very essential to take the overflow over of the river on the other side by using the spillway. So spillway is nothing but the smooth inclined slope which you can see in the second photograph which will help to glide the water smoothly on the other side of the river. Now we are going to see the next sub branch that is nothing but environmental engineering. It is the sub branch of civil engineering which deals with tapping the water from different sources, treating it, purifying it and distributing it to the consumers. So water can be tapped or collected from different sources like rivers or lakes available nearby the city. After that it can be treated and its quality can be tested and then it is supplied to the consumers through water supply distribution system. Once this water is used it is collected back from various uses like residential, industrial or commercial. After that it is treated in wastewater treatment plant and then only it is disposed of in rivers or the available nearby sources. This particular sub branch that is the environmental engineering also includes the study of the causes, the effects and the control measures of different kinds of pollution like air pollution, water pollution, the noise pollution and the land pollution.